In 2004, an accident involving a Mustang would mark the beginning of one of the most serious automotive safety scandals, leading to the downfall of Takata, the largest airbag manufacturing company, which ended up facing a trial for fraud. After the accident that claimed three lives, investigators would discover that one of them did not die due to the impact itself, but rather because of the very element designed to save their life, the airbag. This raised an alarm for Ford, as it could signify that something was amiss with the airbags in their cars. But Ford wasn't the only manufacturer to uncover issues with the airbags. Honda, independently, had received information about several drivers who had been severely injured in minor accidents due to metal fragments flying out when the airbags deployed. They realized something very serious. The problem could potentially affect hundreds of thousands of their vehicles sold since 2004, which would mark the beginning of the downfall for Takata. In the following months, Honda, Toyota, Pontiac, Chevrolet, GMC, Ford, Audi, and several other brands would issue recalls for this problem. This alerted the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, and other road safety agencies around the world. When a manufacturer realizes that one of their vehicles has a defect compromising the vehicle's safety, a recall is issued. This process requires all affected vehicles to go through dealerships to rectify the manufacturing flaw. To give you an idea, one of the largest recalls was by Volkswagen, which affected 11 million cars. The recall caused by Takata's airbags was nearly 10 times larger, encompassing a total of 100 million cars, making it the largest in automotive history. The root cause of this issue was ammonium nitrate, a gas used to inflate the airbags. However, due to its highly corrosive properties, it affected the metallic components comprising the entire system. Upon airbag deployment, these components would break apart and be expelled like a machine gun throughout the interior of the car. To avoid taking responsibility, starting in 2004, Takata began issuing small recalls, managing to get away with it. However, this raised suspicions. The IIHS, NHTSA, and other independent organizations began to investigate, and everything would unravel in 2013 when a former Takata employee confirmed that they had manipulated data and concealed information since the early 2000s to evade penalties and prevent automotive companies from ceasing to purchase their airbags. Making that decision would come at a steep cost for the Japanese company. The company not only had to manage the replacement of the 100 million airbags, but it also faced consumer lawsuits and fines from various regulatory entities across the world. Additionally, the United States Department of Justice imposed a fine of $1 billion, not only for failing to report the flaw, but also for persisting in manufacturing airbags with the same defect. The company was compelled to file for bankruptcy as it couldn't meet its obligations. And due to this negligence, 27 people lost their lives and hundreds were injured. But it hasn't been the only time a Japanese company related to the automotive industry faced issues. Firestone, the American subsidiary of the Japanese company Bridgestone, faced a scandal in the year 2000, when it was discovered that their tires installed on Ford Explorer SUVs could explode. It all began because there was an unusually high number of Ford Explorer vehicles involved in serious accidents. And the majority of these accidents shared a common factor. The drivers suddenly lost control of their SUVs. During preliminary investigations, it was discovered that the accidents were happening because some of the tires were detaching from the rims, causing drivers to lose control of their vehicles. Since explorers have a relatively high ground clearance, they tipped over easily. Indeed, the number of accidents linked to these faulty tires was alarming. More than 250 deaths and over 3,000 injuries were reported worldwide, with the majority of cases occurring in the United States due to the popularity of the explorer in the country. In 1988, the testing stages of the first explorer began, and from this point onwards, the vehicle started to exhibit stability issues. Ford engineers identified several solutions for the unstable Explorer, but their proposals were not approved by management, as they involved significant changes that could delay the car's market release. Therefore, Ford opted for a simpler approach, lowering the tire inflation pressure and requesting Firestone to make the tires lighter. Lowering the pressure aimed to increase the tire's contact area for better grip. However, this would also lead to increased fuel consumption as the engine would need to exert more effort to overcome that additional grip. 
Thus, they needed lighter tires. Despite this approach contradicting the required safety standards for an SUV of the Explorer's caliber, Firestone, eager to meet their customers' demands, Ford represented 40% of their sales, accepted these inappropriate requirements. But there was something that made this scandal different. The relationship between Ford and Firestone was close and had lasted for nearly 95 years. Firestone had been a major tire supplier for Ford for a long time, and both manufacturers had collaborated on numerous projects. However, when the scandal erupted, the toxicity of such a deep business relationship became apparent. Ford claimed that the issue was with the tires, and that the design of the car's suspension was sound. While Firestone, on the other hand, argued that the problem was due to design errors in the Explorer's suspension. They claimed that if they had used the air pressure they recommended, instead of Ford's, the tires wouldn't have had issues. This argument didn't make sense. Due to their failure to disclose information and take corrective measures in a timely manner, Firestone was fined $1.67 billion and Ford was fined $530 million, amounting to a total of $3.64 billion in today's currency. But this is not the first time where Ford would prioritize money over people's lives. In the 1970s, a car called the Ford Pinto was introduced to the market. This compact car model started development in early 1969 and was released for sale in 1971, marking Ford's entry into the compact car segment. It achieved remarkable success, comparable in many ways to legendary cars like the famous Mustang. However, while this was good news for Ford, it wasn't as positive for those who drove the new Ford Pinto. The issue was the location of the fuel tank behind the rear axle. This placement, made to reduce production costs and increase profitability, resulted in a severe vulnerability. In case of a rear-end impact, it could lead to a rupture in the fuel tank, which most likely resulted in a complete vehicle explosion. Internal company documents revealed that Ford was aware of this defect prior to the model's launch, and the decision to go ahead with the Pinto's release was the result of a cold calculation of costs and benefits. Instead of making necessary improvements to rectify the design flaw, Ford chose to proceed with the launch and simply pay potential accident-related lawsuits that might arise. All of this became public knowledge in 1977 when an investigation by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration revealed the severity of the issue. In Ford's own words, it was cheaper to pay the indemnities than to redo the car. The investigation found that at least 180 people had died in fiery crashes or due to burns, and nearly a thousand more had been injured in accidents where Ford Pintos had exploded due to the faulty fuel system design. As a result of this investigation, Ford faced numerous lawsuits and criticism for negligence and for not prioritizing consumer safety. The most notable case involved a man from California, who was rear-ended in his Ford Pinto and suffered severe burns when the fuel tank exploded. The jury in this case concluded that Ford had acted recklessly by not correcting the vehicle's defective design and awarded the plaintiff $128 million in damages. Paradoxically, the negative publicity didn't prevent the Pinto from becoming a sales success for Ford, with over 3 million cars sold. But a scandal that was not only negligent but also shameful was General Motors' Switchgate. In 2007, several of the company's products had a peculiar characteristic. They would shut off by themselves while being driven. We might think that such an issue could stem from a complex manufacturing problem that would be challenging to identify and costly to fix. The reality was quite different. Due to a two-week spring, the ignition switch could turn off suddenly if the keychain was too heavy or if the vehicle hit a moderately strong bump. This instantaneously deactivated not only the engine but also crucial safety systems like airbags and power steering. Authorities realized the severity of the problem in 2007 when an Atlanta-based lawyer, Lance Cooper, a type of lawyer unique to the United States, filed a lawsuit for the death of his client in a traffic accident involving a Chevrolet Cobalt. During the legal process, Cooper discovered that GM had been aware of the ignition switch issue for several years, but had chosen not to take corrective action. Cooper presented evidence that GM had deliberately concealed the problem, employed tactics to delay the process and avoid any liability, and that not only his client but also another 123 people who had died due to these defects had paid the price for it. 
After the lawsuit was filed, the NHTSA launched an investigation, which eventually led GM to announce in February 2014 that it was recalling nearly 2.6 million vehicles due to the ignition switch issue. The company also admitted that it had been aware of the problem for over a decade, but had chosen not to address it due to the high cost implications. The consequences for GM were severe. At the time of the recall announcement, the company faced fines and legal actions, as well as a loss of consumer trust. In addition to the equivalent of nearly a billion dollars in fines imposed by a U.S. jury, GM had to recall over 8 million vehicles worldwide. This happened just as the company was trying to recover from the 2008 bankruptcy. All of this was due to a component worth less than a dollar.